Oh my gosh. It has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous, and I am talking about an over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and everything else where it is a sweltering 66 degrees that is Fahrenheit here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this maybe soon to be rainy uh, day here. It is a Friday afternoon, July 21st, 2023, so I have a crowd of people uh, trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do coming here to Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, for their vacation rental, so I'd better get this off of my chest while I still can since it is Friday. Uh, did I say it's July 21st, 2023? It is time to do what I do every Friday, and that is my ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I go over to the pages of mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Mongabay for their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe while the rest of the planet is going to a Barbie movie, I guess. Uh, oh, be turning your back to the camera, little dog. All right, so we're going to start, as we frequently do uh, here at mongabay.com in sub-Saharan Africa, <laughs> in the shithole, uh, in the shithole country of the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where we see the hilarious knee slapper, a just energy transition requires better governance and equity in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Huh. Did you guys realize that the global energy transition has increased demand for critical minerals involved in the making of such products, such as lithium batteries, solar panels, and other renewable energy sources. <coughs> in the Democratic Republic of Congo, however, this demand has fueled a poorly regulated mining sector that has forced indigenous communities off their land, polluted water and air, and given little back in the way of infrastructure or development. Yes, the DRC has also recently opened 27 new blocks of land for oil exploration. That sounds like a real a renewable revolution. So while all of this mining of this stuff, otherwise known as the fire, uh, we still have the frying pan. While they're doing all of this mining, they have also opened up 27 new blocks of land for oil exploration under the auspices of lifting the nation out of poverty. Yes, but our guests say the handling of these other mineral revenues does not bode well for an equitable oil boom either. There you go. Is there anybody on this planet thinking that this great mythical renewable energy transition is going to be just or equitable. It is going to be the planet eaters already, uh, you know, running the frying pan of the fossil fuel uh, corporations. Now, just uh, adding, adding to their planet eating by uh, bringing on the fire of this bullshit renewable energy. Uh, it's going to be the same old, same old game. The rich are going to keep 
getting richer, the poor getting poorer, everybody knows. Yes, as Leonard Cohen would say, everybody knows. Okay, th this one I like because I finally see some, uh, a little bit of uh, honesty about the myth of the noble savage. Divided by mining, Vale Corporation's new railroad fractures an Amazon indigenous group. Yes. In 1985, mining giant Vale opened a railroad that cuts through the Mai Maria indigenous territory in the Brazilian Amazon. Since being built, the railroad has driven away game cut off access to important water bodies, and disrupted the indigenous people's way of life by introducing compensation money paid by Vale Corporation into the daily life of the villages. Yes, now the mining giant has secured permission to build a second railroad track. Yes. Uh, and so what this is talking about, as I was talking about in 2009 uh, down there when I was looking at these gold miners down there in Peru, that the, it seemed to me that the majority, you know, of these indigenous once again, there is no such thing as an indigenous person in South America. The first wave of invaders uh, from Asia, uh, you know, a few of them, just like in any other bell curve of people, Amazon Indians are people. These, the, you know, these people promoting the myth of the noble savage are, to me, guilty of reverse racism, trying to act like these the, these noble savages are some sort of holy god or something. They are people. Okay? Some of them, like some of the people in any other bell curve on the planet, do not want a railroad track being run across the Amazon rainforest, but the vast majority of them want that moolah from the planet eaters. Uh, you see the same thing going on in the American West right now around Chaco Canyon and the Grand Canyon where a lot of these noble savages are, are blowing the whistle, uh, bitching uh, about having their oil drilling rights locked up. Uh, you see the same thing with the First Nations in Canada, uh, anywhere else on this globe. Uh, the divide and conquer, uh, anyway, moving on from the myth of the noble savage. Uh, Manga Bay, I guess, is making a series out of this stuff over in Cambodia focusing on the fashion industry. We mentioned this last week, but this one, uh, this article, there's, these are two articles from Cambodia right next to each other from their Forest in the Furnace series. Cambodians risking their life and liberty to fuel garment factories entire villages, entire villages in parts of Cambodia have turned to illegal logging of natural forest to supply the firewood needed by garment factories churning out products for international fashion brands. Uh, Manga Bay spoke with several people who acknowledged the illegal and da dangerous nature of their work, but who said they had no other viable means of livelihood. The story we just heard 
from Brazil is the same story playing out in Cambodia. Uh, anyway, uh, what else going on in Cambodia? <coughs> Cambodian conglomerate sparks conflict in Botum Sakor National Park. And you can take this story about the hilarious notion of protected areas and take it to Brazil, to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, probably right here in the good old U.S. of A. For decades, for decades, Cambodians, Cambodia's Botum Sakor National Park has been carved up and the land handed out to corporations as economic concessions at the expense of the ecosystem and local communities. Huh. In 2021, a massive swath of the protected park, including its densest expanse of forest, was handed over to the Royal Group, led by politically connected business tycoon Kith Meng. Um, while the companies developing the National Park promised jobs as well as homes with running water and electricity and access to schools and health centers, none of this has materialized, affected residents say. Uh, royal Group's presence and the threat of even more companies grabbing a piece of the park has instead sparked disputes that residents acknowledge they are likely to lose. Do you think so? So what is going on with drought? in the tropics. Drought cycles erode tropics' ability to absorb CO2 study finds. A recent study finds that tropical carbon sinks have become increasingly vulnerable to water scarcity since 1960 and are consequently now less able to absorb carbon dioxide. These findings suggest that tropical ecosystems are less resilient to climate change than previously thought. Hmm. While the study doesn't necessarily make projections for the future, the findings suggest that an acceleration of climate change which is very likely to bring more drought, could further limit the ability of tropical ecosystems to absorb carbon dioxide, which in turn would worsen climate change. I am so glad that Michael Mann is on record uh, saying there is no acceleration of climate change on this planet. Thank you, Michael Mann, for straightening that out. Huh. You know, once again, it's every week I have to get here and say this. Uh, you, you know, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler and Manga Bay for explaining to me how the world works and for the few people wanting to hear how the world works. I never would have figured this out, never would have understood this concept without Manga Bay explaining this to me. Did you realize that fishing boats, otherwise known as humans, compete with whales and penguins for Antarctic krill. Yes. Scientists and campaigners recently documented huge krill fishing vessels plowing through pods of whales 
feeding in Antarctic waters, a permitted practice they say deprives the whales of their food. Huh. As Antarctic waters warm due to climate change, krill numbers are declining, stressing wildlife that rely on the small crustaceans at the bottom of the food chain. <clears throat> the intergovernment metal body in charge of regulating the krill fishery, yes, has taken steps to protect penguins and seals, but not whales. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, okay. This is looking at aviation's climatic conundrum. More than sustainable aviation fuels are needed. Critics and researchers caution that pinning aviation's carbon cutting huh, aviation's carbon cutting huh, carbon cutting huh, uh, huh, hopes on sustainable aviation fuels is problematic. These sustainable fuels derived from biofuels along with synthetic fuel options such as green hydrogen have produced in only minuscule amounts at high cost compared to what is needed. And I see even Rhett Butler does not know how to spell the word minuscule. The word minuscule is not spelled M-I-N-I-S-C-U-L-E. The word minuscule is spelled M-I-N-U-S-C-U-L-E, but it doesn't matter how you want to spell minuscule, it means the same thing ain't gonna happen. Scaling up sustainable aviation fuel to cover all of the aviation industry's carbon reduction goals while avoiding environmental harm will be a mammoth technological and economic challenge and may not and may not be achievable in the time available as climate change despite what Michael Mann says rapidly escalates. All right, we have the thunder rumbling on the horizon. Okay, this is, you know, their little uh, quick roundup of Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> so, we have in Sub-Saharan Africa today a disaster pipeline an oil field spill, and a mining pit tragedy. Yes, a report by Human Rights Watch, Watch based on interviews with displaced families, says an oil pipeline running from Uganda to Tanzania will be disastrous for the people in its path, not to mention whatever of the people's fellow earthlings they have not already thrown in the stew pot. Okay, let's go over to Chad. Farms and streams in southern Chad have been contaminated after yet another spill by an oil installation owned by Anglo-French oil driller Perenco. And over in Ghana, in the shithole country of Ghana, Three boys have drowned in a rain-filled mining pit in Ghana, highlighting the danger that thousands of these pits, abandoned by illegal gold miners, now pose to nearby communities. Oh, boy. Uh... Uh, I'm 
I'm skipping over the hopium. Uh, okay, we always talk about the South American forest. What is going on in the South American plains? Expanding agriculture could worsen flooding in South American plains. So we got the drought in the rainforest and we got flooding in the plains. The South American plains, including the Pampas and the Gran Chaco, have seen agricultural activity expand drastically to meet international demand. A new study published in Science found that agriculture is exacerbating flooding in the region, which could disrupt food supplies and prices in the future. Do you think so? Okay, more hopium. Uh, more hopium. Okay, here is Clean Mia River. Clean Mia River. Southeast Asia chokes on Mekong plastic pollution. New research shows that the drift of microplastics from the Mekong River to the coastlines of countries around the South China Sea depends on variable factors. The Philippines is most exposed to plastic waste that mainly drifts from the Mekong River to the sea during the monsoon season. Uh, environmental advocates say the findings of this study underscore the importance of international cooperation in combating plastic pollution. Mm, do you think so? Blah, blah, blah. More uh, stuff on this hilarious uh, greenwashing of the myth of sustainable aviation fuels like palm oil. There is no such thing. Never has been is not now, never will be, any such thing as sustainable aviation fuel. If you ever hear the term sustainable aviation fuel, you are being lied to, you are being scammed, you are being greenwashed, and you are being played for the clueless moron that you are if you believe one word of this unadulterated horseshit uh, that there's such a thing as sustainable aviation fuel. Moving along. Uh, let's see. More Opium, more uh, flat out lying out of their teeth. <clears throat> Indonesia claims record low deforestation, but their accounting raises questions. Official data show Indonesia lost an area of forest two-thirds the size of London in 2021 to 2022, making a third straight annual decline. Huh. However, data from the University of Maryland show Indonesia's primary tree cover loss, cover loss actually increased by 13% in 2022 compared to 2021. Hmm, imagine that. All right, we are having some rain on the plane here in, uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Okay, I love it when they ask a question, what 
can solve growing conflicts between agricultural giants and communities in Cameroon. There is one thing that can solve growing conflicts between agricultural giants and communities in Cameroon, which is the same thing that can solve every other environmental problem and social conflict on this planet. That is to keep your pecker in your pants. Do not let your knickers down. Stop breeding and let the human race go extinct. Okay. I guess as long as two humans are left on the planet, one will be working for an agricultural giant beating up somebody in the Cameroon. Tensions between local communities and large-scale agricultural companies are running high in Cameroon. And disputes over land and environmental impacts have increased over the years. Yes. The Cameroon government views industrial agriculture companies as drivers of future economic and development and is encouraging the sector's development. Do you think so? Opium, opium. Uh, here is how fireflies in Sri Lanka are disappearing. Uh, anyway, guys, even though I'm on the porch, I'm getting rained on, and I realize I'm talking to myself. Uh, I need to wrap it up here and um, sit here and enjoy a rainy day in the collapse. Get out there and enjoy a rainy day in the collapse while you still can. Bye guys. How much longer are you getting wet?